Central Bank of Nigeria's RT200 raised to 200 billion forex inflows, which is an initiative aims to, that aims to boost non oil exports, has recorded 4.849 billion uh, forex inflows, dollars, I should say, in 2022. CBN Governor Mr. Godwin Amevelu, who disclosed the feat achieved by its RT200 initiative yesterday, said the amount recorded so far this year was an increase from 3.190 billion recorded in 2021. Also, a total of 81 billion naira worth of rebates was paid to Nigerian exporters in the third quarter of 2022, and this was disclosed by Mr. Godwin Emefele while presenting his keynote speech at this year's RT200 biannual non-oil export summit. Raz News correspondent Oba Adeoye was there. Mr. Emefele explained that the 81 billion naira paid as rebate is an indication of the Apex Bank's commitment to quick acceleration of the export value chain in Nigeria, adding that in the last three quarters, $4.9 billion have been repatriated into the country from non-oil exporters, which is higher than $4.1 billion repatriated in the whole of 2021. He also pointed out that the success of the RT200 scheme had created a formidable premise to make all export products eligible for the rebate and not just limited to the finished and semi-finished products. There is a need for us to build road infrastructure out of the Ekwe Leki area out of Lagos. There is a need to develop road infrastructure from Ekwe that goes straight into Undo and cut off some of the traffic or bypasses the, tra the traffic within Lagos. They don't have to come this way. They just need to, people import and they export. And I mean, and then they take them out of the country. Or you want to export, you come in easily through the Jebo de Ekwe axis. You don't have to go through Kurodu and all this area to come through this place to get into that side. Come in straight, designated export area, where cargoes that are coming into the country, bringing goods can also go out easily. The CBN governor also called for a collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment to improve the gains in Nigeria's export sector while urging Nigerian exporters to continue to improve their products quality in order to benefit from the CBN export scheme. According to him, non-oil export is a more sustainable means of increasing financial flows into the Nigerian economy to stimulate organic growth. We do apologies. I know that the process of appropriation has been very difficult and I, I heard the last time that something was paid under um, export grant was about two billion in a year. We would like to see and encourage and collaborate with your ministry to see how we can work together to, to the extent that while we are doing ours, whatever CBN needs to do to complement your ministry to ensure that we are able to encourage more people to conduct their export activities and end rebates so as to encourage them to do more, we will be willing to work with you, sir. The CBN sponsored biannual export summit with the theme RT200 non-oil export program, the journey so far, also are the Lagos State Governor and the Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment in attendance. On his part, Governor Babajide Sonwolu says the Lagos State Government has completed the first phase of the six-lane 19-kilometer highways to support the newly commissioned deep sea port in the Lekki axis of the state. He added that his administration is waiting to receive the first shipment of vessels that will start commercial transactions at the seaport. We can grow the non-oil exports potentials that we have in our country. All of us just need to understand that we are all on the same side. We are probably just looking at different sides of the same coin. And once we begin to have a collaborative, you know, conversations like this, then we're on the right track at ensuring that all that we require for our country to be resilient, to be sustainable, for us to be able to provide what we require, you know, um, to, to take this country to the next level, it's available. And I believe in this room, you know, people listening to me and watching me are part of the people that can make that happen. It is our hope that this scheme, anchored by the Central Bank of Nigeria, will be a key driver of this goal. As we all know, exportation is also not just the preserve of large organizations. And I'm delighted to see that this program is all-inclusive 
as it targets all stakeholders in the export business community. The RT200 program is an initiative of the CBN with the support of the Bankers Committee, which aims to raise $200 billion in foreign exchange earnings from non oil proceeds over the next three to five years, while the rebate scheme is designed to incentivize exporters in the non-oil sector to encourage repatriation and sale of export proceeds into the foreign exchange markets. Oba Adeoye, Arise News, Lagos. Let's talk about some news. <coughs> okay, yesterday the CBN held uh, the biannual uh, uh, meeting on the uh, RT200 uh, initiative here in Lagos. RT200 means raised to uh, uh, ensure about $200 billion uh, dollars foreign exchange uh, inflows. Uh, the purpose of which is one, um, you know, to encourage the value chain, to expand the value chain, and to increase productivity, and to explore that linkage between, you know, uh, non-oil export and the industrialization process uh, in Nigeria. And what happened yesterday, uh, according to the report given by the CBN governor, is absolute good news. To the extent that we have even seen an improvement from about $3.1 billion forex inflow from non-oil exports to $4.987 billion uh, inflow uh, in 2022 alone. So what was uh, put on the table was an illustration of the uh, you know, reasonability of the idea of encouraging non-oil exports. And we know that in terms of receipts uh, in Nigeria uh, this year, according to the uh, last report, whereas crude oil exports got to a point where it was providing zero dollars in terms of revenue, as we were told, from uh, an inflow of about $3 billion uh, you know, previously. Now, the CBN governor himself even disclosed it about six days ago that we are down to zero dollars from crude oil exports, simply because of crude oil theft, simply because of the uh, oil uh, you know, companies uh, suspending exploration activities. It was only in July when Shell returned to the uh, Focados uh, terminal uh, that we could now by now be saying, okay, since July, uh, we have uh, passed the uh, one million mark in terms of uh, crude oil uh, production. But the challenge still remains. The Nigerian government, from a security perspective, from a revenue perspective, still has to deal with the challenge of crude oil uh, expo export. But in terms of non oil export, which is something that successive governments are focused upon, we're beginning you know, to see the value of uh, non oil uh, exports you know, in terms of revenue. Revenue, as President uh, Muhammadu Buhari pointed out when he was laying the uh, 2023 budget before the National Assembly, being the major problem of uh, Nigeria. So, commendations will seem to be in order uh, for the initiative, but a lot more uh, still needs to be done. And the CBN governor uh, gave an idea of a number of things that will still have to be done uh, to make sure that what has been achieved is, is sustained and more is also done uh, in terms of expanding, uh, you know, the uh, non-oil export uh, value chain. And of course, he also talked about rebates up to the tune of about 21 billion naira uh, that have been given to encourage exporters in that uh, sector. What I think is also uh, remarkable beyond the RT200 uh, uh, meeting yesterday is, is the fact that this report is also coming at a time when the Nigerian government, the federal government of Nigeria, has now uh, kept to its pledge, uh, you know, to set up, uh, to establish uh, a national trade information portal uh, that was also announced uh, yesterday uh, in another breath, that Nigeria now has a trade information portal. And that trade information portal, of course, uh, will seem to be uh, you know, uh, a, a good step forward. Nigeria being one of the three countries chosen in West Africa by uh, uh, the United Nations uh, Commission for Trade and Development, UNCTAD, you know, for setting up the NTIP. And now we're told that we have an NTIP in place, uh, which would uh, provide data, ensure transparency, and also uh, provide a platform for persons, uh, companies involved in export, you know, uh, to provide uh, information out there to even make Nigeria's uh, exports uh, more competitive. 
And I think that when we take this with the success uh, recorded so far with the RTA 200, it looks like, you know, in terms of trade, in terms of encouraging non-LS, but, uh, you know, both the central bank and other uh, relevant government departments are making an effort in this regard. But as in everything governmental, what is important is sustainability. What happens hereafter? What happens when there is a change of government? Will the next set of people uh, who will be in charge of all this, you know, be present-minded enough uh, to, to build on whatever may have been achieved so far? I mean, <clears throat> I'll say <clears throat> a big congrats to the CBN. They started this for a while now, RT200, trying to show up potential, trying to show up possibilities as regards non oil exports, which is good. Numbers risen from 3 billion to about 4 billion US dollars, some commendable numbers. But the greatest problem with Nigeria, an export of its possibilities, is Nigeria itself. The Nigerian factor, the legacy problem. CBN can do their beat, but what are the bottlenecks that impede export? And I assume most of these products are just the physical products, but also the deeper form of export that can transform the country are the intellectual products. And that's one thing we don't look too much at. Intellectual property. It goes a long way. In the last couple of years, we have seen the growth of a Nigerian tech sector powered by intellectual property that has shaped Nigeria. Two transactions. You remember the transaction with Main One and the transaction with Paystack. You saw how much inflow, a little over $400 million in just two transactions. Just imagine if we can support our economy in such a way that we grow our intellectual exports and make more amount of money through that. And it's possible. So what's the solution? Apart from thinking of just physical exports like agriculture as non-oil exports, look at intellectual exports. It's time for us to set up more hubs like CC hubs of this world, to create more intellectual exports. It's time for us to rejig our educational system. And that's why you see that Asu Go on strike was a big misnomer, was a faux pas for Nigeria. So how can we show up our educational sector to groom that intellectual export? Look at countries like India. Most of the top CEOs in America are from India extraction. That's a big intellectual export. And that money feeds back into India. One, it could be through family ties. Two, it could be through public imaging. Concerning the baseline agricultural exports, the big question is, are we adding value to the exports? Four billion, yes, good number. But if you ask me, isn't most of the things we export, are they not the raw agricultural product like sesame seeds and the likes, and still take them abroad? How many Nigerian chocolates do we export made in Nigeria that can be sold in other parts of the world? except we start to increase numbers of made in Nigerian goods that can be sold, then we cannot increase the numbers for exports. But for that to happen, you know the legacy problems. The customs is another big problem. You can see the chaos that happens at the ports. What's wrong with the scanners now? Do we have scanners now to check goods and commodity? What happened to ETO? Is it working? How quick is it for you to take goods out of the ports? What's the manufacturing potential like in Nigeria as we speak? Do we have power to support manufacturing, to produce made in Nigerian goods, and all of that? But it's a right step in the right direction by the CBN. And I look forward to that day where I can't wait to see a Nigerian made shoe paraded on Oxford streets. But I have seen it already, and I see possibilities. I was excited to see David Wedge a Nigerian fashion designer, open shop abroad. We need more of the likes of David Wedge. We need more of intellectual and physical exports of Nigerian goods. God bless Nigeria. Congrats, CBN. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company is assuring Nigerians of fuel sufficiency. With over 2 billion liters available at a press conference in Abuja, the company says it has enough supplies to last 30 days. It attributes long queues across the country so ongoing road infrastructure projects across Apapa, which is also complicated by road access challenges in parts of Lagos Depot. 
NMPC also says uh, Abuja is impacted by challenges recorded in Lagos. It is promising increased product loading, including 24 hours operation in selected depots and extended hours of operation at strategic stations to ensure product sufficiency nationwide. The gridlock is easing out. An NMPC has programmed vessels and trucks to unconstrained depots and massive loadouts from depots to various states are closely being monitored. Abuja is impacted by the challenges recorded in Lagos. NMPC retail and other key marketers have intensified dedicated loading into Abuja to restore normalcy as soon as possible. We want to reassure all Nigerians that NMPC has sufficient products and we have significantly increased product loading, including 24 hours operations in selected depots. In addition, we have caused extended hours at some stations to ensure product sufficiency nationwide and at all times. Dr. Bati. Well, it's good that uh, at last we are getting this explanation from the NMPC to reassure Nigerians that, uh, you know, fuel will be available. Um, well, Nigerians have gone through a lot of hardship uh, in the last uh, few days, particularly here in Lagos, where many of the fuel stations uh, were complaining of uh, supply. And in many parts of the country, um, fuel was being sold for between you know, uh, 250 Naira to as high as 500 Naira in the interland uh, parts of uh, Nigeria. And uh, we had uh, the Ipman uh, spokesperson, uh, national coordinator on this program, Michael Osatuye, uh, who made it very clear that, look, it's simply a problem of supply. And that members of the uh, Independent Petroleum Market Association of Nigeria cannot get a product. They've been buying from third parties. And because they've been buying from third parties, by the time they add uh, transportation uh, to the cost of the fuel, and then they put their profit margin, uh, then of course you find a situation whereby people have to pay through their nose. And there is no system in place for enforcing the uh, 162 Naira 50 uh, cover uh, that government had prescribed as what should be the uh, pump price of fuel. Uh, simply a question of uh, uh, the market you know, responding to the circumstances in which it had found itself. Now, <clears throat> we're now being told that part of the problem is because of infrastructure issues around the Apapa Depot and all of that. Well, the other time, the explanation we were given was that because of flood, you know, uh, many roads in certain parts of the country were impassable, uh, you know, resulting in, uh, in a first scarcity in the federal capital territory and the environs. Well, the main thing to worry about is the uh, cost of fuel scarcity, the hardship that people go through. At least uh, twice uh, last week, I had to jog uh, from, uh, you know, about uh, 400 meters away uh, to get to the stu studio. By the time I got here, I was panting. Now, it's not fair to suggest, uh, you know, a decent citizen like me to that kind of uh, hardship. No, it's most unfair. I should be able to just, uh, you know, uh, get to wherever I'm going without the hardship, not to talk of the difficulty of uh, having to uh, uh, get fuel for the, uh, for the vehicle. In any case, we hope that uh, the assurance that has now been given that uh, there is enough supply uh, that will be made available, well, that supply should be made available very quickly, uh, you know, to, to you know, uh, put an end to the hardship that we're going through. But beyond all of that, there are more fundamental issues that need to be addressed. Uh, I think the Minister of State for Petroleum was saying that, oh, um, by uh, next year, there will be no need for importation of fuel again, uh, that uh, the refineries will be working, everything will be available. We keep hearing that all the time. When it happens, I'm sure that Nigerians themselves will not hesitate in uh, giving the evidence of their eyes and of their experience and in commending what has been done. But there are many ideas on the table. One, the independent marketers are saying, 
look, there should be complete deregulation of the uh, downstream uh, uh, sector, as has been done for kerosene and for diesel, uh, that even uh, petrol, you know, should be uh, completely deregulated and to, to remove the monopoly situation, whereby it's only the NMPC that is bringing in for. They want private, uh, you know, uh, operators also to be allowed to uh, import uh, fuel. The second thing is that they are also saying that even when that happens, the forest regime should be such that it will be possible, you know, for that deregulation to take place. Number three, uh, there are persons who are saying this situation exists because there is a lot of smuggling, there is a lot of speculation, and that subsidy has to go. That once subsidy is removed, you know, market, the market would, uh, you know, uh, determine, uh, you know, outcomes. Although I recall raising the point that, uh, well, when subsidy goes, uh, you know, that could uh, also have social consequences. But there are persons who say, well, when those social consequences occur, we will deal with them. So there are more fundamental issues beyond uh, infrastructure, beyond road, beyond, you know, uh, a papa port. Uh, there are concrete you know, identified, already identified issues. Uh, the last one will probably be how to get the refineries to work. I'm not just hoping uh, that is the Dangote refinery that everybody is hoping uh, will solve the problem. All right, so, I mean, there are many problems. And Dr. but it's a good thing you asked a very important question. What's the cost of this fuel scarcity to our lives? In 2021, a Lagos-based institute, DN report or the N Institute did a research that says Lagos loses four trillion every year to traffic situation for traffic. Four trillion. Just imagine how much we've lost since this chaos started by the NNPC. And the question is when will the NNPC come out straight with us as regards what is happening? Because there has never been a time that there's scarcity that the NNPC doesn't come out with a statement that says we have 2 billion liters of petrol in our reserves. The problem is logistic. There's every, please, you can fact check me on this. Check every time we've had a fuel scarcity and check the first reaction of the NMPC if they never say they have 1 to 2 billion liters. But despite the billions of liters, Nigerians can buy 50 liters of fuel. They have to put it in jerry cans. They can't take their cars into the filling station. I've had a conversation yesterday how somebody was giving testimony because he could use his own added money to buy fuel. It is time the NMPC comes out straight with us. A certain Mr. Omar Ajia, if I get his name correctly, said in a newspaper interview that Nigerians will not have fuel scarcity by December. Isn't tomorrow the 1st of December? Isn't this scarcity going to continue? So we all know the problems, and we beat around the bush. Ipman is saying his own, NMPC is saying his own, and they're gaslighting Nigerians. What's the way forward? How many million cars do we even have in Nigeria? I'm not sure. I don't have the empirical numbers here, but I don't know a quote. I'm not sure we have up to 20 million cars. The first question is, how much are we truly using? How much are we consuming? Second question is, when are we going to kick this subsidy out once and for all? A lot of people argue there's going to be hardship, but there's also going to be market forces. As long as we remove subsidy that gives the people a level of arbitrage to go and sell our petrol somewhere else. We don't have chaos on diesel. We don't have chaos on kerosene this way. So why are we having chaos on petrol? It is time to pull it out so that other marketers can probably get into the fray. But you see, the bigger problem is, as long as we are still dependent on Forex to import fuel into the country, and we have an unstable Forex market, then the problems will continue. So we need to look inward for more refineries. There are a couple of modular refineries. Can we ramp up that? And then we have big refineries. So we can refine our oil internally and also sell to other markets. We know the problem. We know the solution. But we didn't will to do right, help us. Or because people are benefiting across board, they continue to do what is wrong. This country is blessed and it is well with this country.